Hello, I'm Landon Schlungen, and today we're going to do the React and Redux challenges on FreeCodeCamp. So this is going to be all about combining React and Redux together and how they work together to manage state in React so that we can do some more complex stuff. So let's uh, try it out and go to the first lesson. Getting started with React Redux, we're going to be building out this display messages component throughout this uh, this section. And for this challenge, we want to add a constructor that takes in props and then it calls super props. And then it has this dot state in it that equals an object that has input of an empty string. And it also has messages that's set to an empty array. So there we go. We got our display messages going with a constructor and a state. So let's try this out. Yep. Manage state locally first. There's a lot of stuff we have to do for this challenge. So let's get starting with building it. First of all, we want an input element, a button element, and a UL element. And then our input is going to be a type of text. It's going to have a value equal to our input. So this dot state at input. And it's also going to have a on change equal to our handle change. So this dot handle change. And then we want to add in our handle change method up here. So we'll go const handle change equals a arrow function and maybe I don't need const and then inside this handle change method we need a set state we'll do set state it also takes in a event parameter of e and we want to set our state to be input equal to e dot target dot value so I'm going to see if this works if I can type into this which I cannot right now and I think it's because we actually have to do a, the bind thing instead of this so I'll just uh, do a regular function here and then I'll do this dot handle change equals this dot handle change dot bind this and now I should be able to type in here no I have to do this dot set state and maybe now I can type into it yep cool and I wonder if I can do it with an arrow function I'll try it so I can still type into it can I get rid of this line though yep I can cool so yeah when we use arrow functions we don't have to do the bind this thing which is really nice and then for the button it'll say submit and it'll have a on click handler that will trigger this dot submit message so I'll go up here and do submit message equals an arrow function and this one will do this dot set state and we'll take our previous state and then we want to append our messages onto it so we'll go messages equals the previous state dot messages plus the one that is put into the input so plus the input one so we'll do State dot input or no we'll do this dot state dot input and then also we want to reset our input once we submit it so we'll go input back to an empty string or actually support for the experimental syntax class properties isn't currently enabled so does that mean i have to do the bind thing man that's unfortunate well i changed it back to binding and just regular functions and now in our unordered list we want to map over our items so map over our messages so I'll we'll do brackets to indicate JavaScript, and then we'll do this dot state dot messages dot map to map over them. So we'll map over each message, and we'll return out of that li's of our message in it. And then it will also have a key equal to the message. And let's see if this works. Submit, submit, and then it appends it on. Yep, looks like it works. So yeah, we make an input, a button, and a unordered list. The input takes in our our input box and updates the input and then our button will append that input into the messages array using this and we should be good to go let's try it out yep cool extract state logic to redux now we want to do a bunch of our redux stuff so first we'll define our add action it'll just be equal to a string of add and then we'll define our action creator called add message which will be an error function that returns a action so it'll return an object of type add and also it'll take a parameter of message and pass that into what is returned so so I guess we'll go message equals message but of course we could also just do message and it's the same thing as doing this next up we want our message reducer so we'll do const message reducer equals an arrow function and reducers take in a initial state and an action the initial state will equal an empty array and then we will return our state in case it doesn't do anything but we'll also check if our action is add so if action dot type equals add then we will return our an array with our state in it so dot 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 state plus the action dot message appended on and I believe this works for this one. Oh, also I need to add a the redux store so we'll do const store 
equals redux dot, what is it, create store. That takes in our reducer. Yeah, there we go. I think this will work. Uh, let's try it out. Cool, sweet. Use provider to connect Redux to React. So right now they have all the stuff that we already typed. The stuff that we typed with Redux they have in here and the stuff that we typed with React, the display messages component that we made. Except they might have done stuff a little bit differently. But now we want to connect them up. And the way we do this is with a wrapper. We take a provider, the provider that's uh, provided right here. It's the react redux.provider. And we pass in our store equal to our store. And then we close it up, provider. And then inside of our provider, we put our app, which is going to be our display messages. So I'll put that in there. And I think I need to return from it. Yeah, I think I have to go render and then return and then put this stuff inside of there. And there we go, now it shows up and it should work as before except I don't think we're using any of the Redux stuff right now, but I'm sure we'll get to that in the next lesson. So let's try it. Yep, cool. Map state to props. This is one of the two functions that we need to connect React and Redux. And right now we want to make this function. So we'll go const map state to props and we'll pass in our state. We'll do an arrow function and then we'll just return an object with messages equal to our state. That's what they wanted us to do for this challenge. And let's try it out. Yep, map dispatch to props. So this is the other function that we need. And this one is for handling our functions. The other one is for handling our state. So we can think of map state to props as getting our state and map dispatch to props as changing our state. And for this function, we'll do const map dispatch to props as an arrow function. And then it will take dispatch as a parameter. It returns an object and it will have a property of submit new message that's set to this dispatch function. So I'm guessing it's something like this. So I'll just copy this over. And then we want this to be message. So switch username with message. And then login user should be add message. So I believe that's what they wanted us to do for this one. And let's uh, move on. Yep, connect Redux to React. This is our magic method that we need. It's called connect. And then we pass in our two functions that we made. The map state to props and map dispatch to props to our component. So we connect it with our actual React. So down here is what we're gonna do for that. So we get connect from our React Redux. So we'll go connect and we'll connect our map state to props first, and then we'll do map dispatch to props second, and then we'll call it again and add in our component, which is presentational. So we'll just add presentational in here, and it might have to be the tag version. I must be spelling something wrong. Oh, I need to have it be connected to a constant called connected component. And I really don't think it should be the tag version. So I'll get rid of those tags. And there we go, now it's showing up. So there we go, now we have a connected component that we can get our state from Redux, and we can dispatch new actions to change our state. So let's try this out. Yep, connect Redux to the Messages app. So now we're going back to our Messages app where we wrote some of this already. And first of all, we want to make a connection. So we'll define our connection and we'll call it container. And that's gonna be equal to our connect function where we pass in our state to props and dispatch to props. And then we call on that with our actual component which is presentational. So I'll grab that, bring it down, throw it in here. So it should be good for the connection. Now we actually have to wrap it in our provider. So we'll go provider and we'll give it a state and the state's gonna be called store. So we'll do store equals, and I believe it's our store that we pass in here. And where do we get our store? Oh yeah, right here. Here's our store. And then we just close up the provider and we put in our presentational app, I believe. And then we replace null with our stuff that we just made. And there it shows up. And let's see if it works. Yep, it seems to be working. So that's good. I don't know if it's using Redux though. So yeah, right now it's not using Redux. It's still using the internal state. But now that we have it connected up correctly, I think we'll be able to grab those functions and the state with the props of the class component. It'll be like this.props has our state in it. I'm sure we'll get to that in the next lesson. So let's see. And it doesn't work because my presentational should receive messages from the Redux store as a prop. Oh, I actually want to render container as its child. So we actually want to render this constant instead of the actual React component. So now let's see if it works. 
Yep, there we go. Extract local state into Redux. So now we're actually gonna use Redux in our React component. So we can get rid of this messages state because that's gonna be handled by Redux. And we can also get rid of our set state in submit message because that's also gonna be handled by Redux. And then in our submit message, we want to dispatch our submit new message function from this.props, so we'll go this.props.submitNew message. And what message is it gonna submit? It's gonna submit our input. So this.state.input. So yeah, because we connected everything up correctly, we now have access to this function in our props, even though it's part of Redux. So yeah, here's our submit new message one. And that's what we're calling on by doing this.props.submit new message. And then instead of this.state.messages, because we got rid of messages in our state, we can do this.props.messages. And now it's getting it from the store instead. Now let's see if it works the same way as it did before. And it looks like it does, except it's not clear our input so I might have to do set state on that just to clear it so there we go we're clearing our input as well and it works the same as before let's see if it runs the test correctly yep cool moving forward from here so we've completed the react and redux challenges but typically you won't see it being used like this we would instead have them separated into different files and stuff like that and then we would import them into our different files to use it something like this where we import a bunch of our properties from Redux and we connect them up to React this way instead of everything being in one file. And there's this thing called Create React App, which comes configured and ready to go. And then also we can enable Babel and React and React DOM for CodePen so that it works there as well. I like to use the Create React App deal. But yeah, I guess I'll finish this challenge up quick. Now I know React and Redux and run it. Next up, we have our front end library projects where we're going to be building a random quote machine, a markdown previewer, a drum machine, a JavaScript calculator, and a 25 plus 5 clock, otherwise known as a Pomodoro clock. And I'll do one video for each of these. And I will also probably be using Create React App and Visual Studio Code to make them instead of CodePen. And please don't get scared by Visual Studio Code and making sure it's running correctly because it will definitely help out in the long run to use that instead of CodePen. Otherwise, that's all I've got for today and I'll see you next time. Bye.